Hello pandas and other scrap enthusiasts and welcome back to the shop. Today I'm excited to share a new toy with all of you. You've seen me melt and pour some scrap copper and brass ingots with my torch setup, but there's a hard limit to the volume of material you can actually melt with that. So I was looking forward to getting something that can melt a little more. So you can imagine I was jazzed when the company rep at Vivor offered to send me over one of their melt furnaces to review. You've got some options if you want to melt various metals at home and pour them into molds either for ingots or whatever projects you have. But I think the most efficient once you get over a certain size is definitely one of these propane melt furnaces. They come in at different price points and you can certainly spend a lot if you want to, but this is one of the more affordable options, so I'm excited to see how it performs. Inside the box is everything you need to get started, except a mold. I decided to re-fluff the insulation a little bit because it did get moved around in uh, transportation. As long as this hole is lined up, I think we should be good. Looks great. Decent looking crucible. Some passable tongs. I don't like these gloves at all, but at least they're there. And they are made out of real leather. Furthermore, we've got a regulator, a gas hose, a gas nozzle, and the wand. And uh, some bits to attach it all together. They've even included some Teflon tape, if you need it. The regulator is actually nicer than I would have expected. The uh, gauges have this nice protective rubberized cover. The fronts of the gauges are plastic, not glass, but it's neat that they chose a regulator that shows you not only the bottle pressure, but also the pressure you're sending through the hose. It is made out of mixed metals, and while the important parts do seem to be brass, the tips are definitely aluminum, and I think the front is steel. Assembly of all this should be fairly simple. I'm just going to heat the ends of the hose a little bit so I can get them fully seated on the barbs. And I've never seen finger grip hose clamps like these before, but they were easy to use. So there we go, that should pretty much do it. Lock this piece down in here, and we're off to the races, right? Well, no. We need to take care of the extremely important step of sealing the ceramic blanket. In its raw form, it's very hazardous to breathe in the fibers it releases. So I'm going to apply a heavy coating of this ceramic wool rigidizer. It's a colloidal silica suspension, which can resist very high temperatures and will crystallize the first time it's heated, hardening the blanket. I gave up on the sprayer pretty quickly and just brushed it on, but this looks like a pretty solid application. And after leaving it overnight to fully saturate and partially dry out, it looks like this. Much safer already, no free floating fibers. You could also coat it with refractory mortar which means time to fire it up. Yes? Almost. One last thing. We check for leaks. I ruined my soapy water bottle, so I'm just using Windex. And there. See? There is a leak. So we'll tighten that up. And unless they're damaged, the brass fittings really shouldn't need Teflon tape, but it's there if we need it. That looks good. All right. This thing's pretty fun. And that should be our rigidizer cured. So finally, let's melt and pour some metal. You've seen me break down electric motors a hundred times before, so we're just gonna quickly strip some copper out of this one and see how this goes. I played around with the fuel-air mixture a bit and found that between 15 and 20 psi on the propane was pretty good, and adjusting the air so it sounds as loud and as much like a jet engine as possible is where you need to be. After figuring that out, it took about 15 minutes to melt this partially filled crucible of copper. And for a first attempt, that's not too bad. I'm not sure how to explain the porosity on this bar, because it looks pretty good otherwise, but I'm guessing that's because my mold was a little bit rusty in that spot. Now, for something a bit more challenging, let's try out some brass. Brass is much more difficult to melt, because you don't want to go very far beyond 900 degrees, or the zinc will start to burn. That's always a mess, because not only are those fumes toxic, but you'll get a whole bunch of zinc oxides piling up, and a zinc fire. Which is what happened to me. I tried to hide my mistake by adding enough flux to capture all the oxide, but there was far too much, and uh, I'd overheated the brass. 
this was gonna be ugly. And yeah, not a very even pour, kind of dirty, kind of ugly. No fault of the furnace, but brass takes practice and should be heated up more slowly. And finally, what a lot of people will probably want this for, the most common metal in the world, aluminum. Now I'm using some high quality cast aluminum that came off of that same motor. I don't want to be mixing different aluminum grades. We can experiment like that later on. This, unsurprisingly, worked great, and it took five minutes or less to get this crucible fully melted. There wasn't even much slag I had to clean off, and I think that's for two reasons. Number one, it's a fairly oxygen-starved environment, so the aluminum shouldn't be able to form too thick of an oxide layer. And number two, I specifically chose high-quality casting aluminum. And there we see proof that even an idiot can get pretty good results the first try with this tool. Hit him with a wire brush to clean him up, and beautiful. I really do like the porosity, it's kind of cool looking. The brass doesn't look nearly as bad now. Looks like some kind of weird landscape. Oh, I like it. And aluminum, looking strangely like human skin. Looking pretty not bad. So those are my bars, and here are my thoughts. Overall, the Vivor melting furnace works great. It's not a very complicated product, so you don't need to overthink it. And there are a few points where it could be improved, and a few minor adjustments that you should definitely make. The included gloves and tongs are nearly useless. Yes, they will work to get you started if you don't have anything else, but uh, the gloves, they're not insulated at all, and I was really glad to have better ones on hand, and the tongs are basically the same way. The way they are now, they have this little band on both sides, which is the only point of contact when you're actually grabbing the crucible, and that's a, that's a lot of force on one small spot, and it's likely to damage the crucible and cause it to fail prematurely. If these were just slightly adjusted so that they were laying flat when gripping the side of the crucible, that would be a huge improvement. So I'm going to modify these and probably still use them to recover the hot crucible out of the kiln. And it is nice that they used uh, quarter inch steel. They're not cheap garbage, they just need a bit of adjustment. To their credit, the included regulator with the dual gauge system is nice, and while not made out of the highest quality materials, is more than sufficient to do the job, and an improvement over what you get with similar competing products. The included gas hose is a proper T-grade one, as should be used with propane, and the burner and ball valve assembly are perfectly sufficient and have plenty of points of adjustment for fine-tuning your air and fuel mixture. The included graphite crucible may not be the highest quality on the market, I'm already seeing some, some micro cracks form all over the, the body of the thing, but there's a good chance that's more my fault than anything because I put it through some pretty extreme uh, thermal cycling, it was pretty cold, and then it got really hot, and then it got really cold again, and then really hot again. The refractory installation is honestly fine. It's the exact same stuff that you would get on any other similar product or that you would use if you were building your own. And none of them come with refractory mortar pre-applied or rigidizer pre-applied because it would get damaged in shipping. That's the same across any similar product. It would be nice if they included a bag of refractory mortar, but that stuff isn't completely necessary and it actually will increase the time it takes to heat things up, so I'm told. Coating the insulation with something, though, either rigidizer or refractory mortar, is a necessity. That stuff is not good for you. It's a risk to your health. And some people will say that after the first firing, it's not going to release any fibers. That's optimistic. You should definitely coat it. In addition, the insulation on the lid loves to fall out, and that's only going to get worse as it shrinks with use. It's a simple matter to drill a couple holes and put a few screws in, and that should hold it in fine. 
And just to be clear, the body of the unit is not thick, high-quality steel, and I suspect the first point of failure will probably be burning a hole a little bigger through the lid. But what do you expect? Overall, though, I'm actually really happy with the product, and I'll continue to use it confidently for the foreseeable future. I don't have a more expensive competing product on hand to compare it to, but I have a hard time imagining what improvements there would be on one to justify the additional expense. And you could make one yourself. It's not a complicated tool. But if you have to buy all of the parts new, the cost will probably be pretty close to the same. Overall, though, I'd say this product is a win, and I do recommend it. 7.8 maple syrups out of a moose. If you are going to buy one, though, get some rigidizer or refractory mortar, put some screws in the lid so the insulation doesn't flop out, throw out those gloves and get some real gloves and tongs, and you'll be set. Improvements I would make at the factory if I was the one shipping these out. Drill a couple holes in the lid, toss a few screws in a bag of refractory mortar or colloidal silica in the box, and give those tongs a little bit more of a bend, and that would be it. And if you are interested in picking one up, use the code in the video description for 35% off the 10 kilogram model. Only valid till the end of the month, though. Going forward, I'll be more careful regulating the temperature if I decide to melt more brass, and I'll get some bigger molds, probably graphite ones. Like and subscribe to support more quality scrap content. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Leave it better than you found it. Keep doing the thing.